For almost five decades, Voyager 1 drifted quietly through deep space until something changed. In early 2025, it detected a faint, structured hum, unlike anything previously recorded. It wasn't random noise or technical interference, it felt. Deliberate intelligent, as scientists scrambled to understand it, AI systems discovered patterns hidden within. The hum revealed binary echoes resembling parts of Earth's 1970 for Arachibo message. But Voyager didn't just hear it, this, it responded. Without receiving any instruction from Earth, it shifted course toward a dark, starless region of space. No planets, no visible objects, just an empty void. And a signal experts now suggest the transmission could only have come from three possible sources, us, a long-lost civilization, and one completely unknown. Voyager may have intercepted a message that wasn't intended for Earth, a signal that, by all expectations, shouldn't even exist. Voyager 1 had been silently moving through space for nearly 50 years, far beyond Pluto's orbit, past the edge of our solar system, and outside the reach of the sun's dimmest light. Its systems were aging, its energy reserves dwindling. Most believed its journey would end in silence. But in early 2023, everything changed. Dot something pierced the emptiness. A low frequency hum appeared in the data subtle, but consistent, like a breath echoing across the void. It wasn't anticipated and it wasn't random. At first, engineers suspected it was background radiation or hardware degradation. But repeated analysis through AI filters showed something unusual. The hum wasn't flat or chaotic, it had rhythm. There were harmonic intervals and musical like divisions in frequency. It repeated, echoed, and shifted over time. That doesn't happen with space noise. This isn't a glitch, said one technician. It's a pattern, it's alive in the data. NASA scientists ran the signal through advanced recognition software. Patterns of binary code emerged ones and zeros arranged in intentional groupings. Some bore strong resemblance to segments of the Arecibo message humanity transmitted in 1970 for a mathematical greeting aimed at contacting other life. The match wasn't perfect, but it was close enough to stun the room into silence. What were the odds this happened by chance? Physicist Michio Kaku analyzed the signal's structure, timing, and consistency. His verdict was clear. This is structured information, not random. Not an echo in that quiet moment. A spacecraft at the edge of known spacemen have heard. Something and responded. Not human. Not accidental. A whisper from the unknown. Then came the question that changed everything. What happened to Voyager? It didn't just detect a sound. It acted. 15 billion miles from Earth. The aging spacecraft fired its thrusters and prompted. Without receiving a command, it rotated, pointing itself toward a dark region in interstellar space. No stars, no planets, no reason. Engineers initially panicked. Was this a malfunction, a reaction to a solar event? System diagnostics said otherwise. The maneuver was smooth and logical except for one glaring problem. No one had ordered it. We. Checked every line of code, one analyst said, there was nothing. It just turned. What made this turn even more disturbing was the location. Voyager aimed itself at an uncharted void. No stars, no gravitational anomalies, just an area. Long cataloged as empty. And yet, it was drawn there, like it was reacting to something unseen or worse. Something it could see. NASA ruled out mechanical faults. Thrusters, fuel lines, guidance systems all operational. The movement wasn't random, it was purposeful. If no command was issued and no fault detected, then what triggered the turn? The only explanation left was that Voyager had reacted to an external cue. It's like watching a machine answer a phone, no one heard ring, a mission engineer said. But that wasn't all. After turning, Voyager began transmitting new data. At first, it looked like corrupted telemetry. But within the static, new patterns surfaced rhythmic, timed, and repetitive. What seemed like noise was more than that, it carried meaning. Engineers isolated the signal, stripping away timestamps and telemetry. 
AI analysis flagged symmetry, binary sequences, and harmonic order. It wasn't human made, but it was structured. Inside the waveform were Echo's mathematical shapes that mirrored elements of the original Arachibo transmission. Prime numbers, logical sequences, it wasn't speech, it was code. And it spoke our language, this wasn't. A first contact, it felt like someone answering. Michio Kaku summarized it with unsettling clarity. If Voyager is repeating a format we invented, we may be part of a conversation we didn't begin. This wasn't discovery. It was interception, a call and response delayed by decades, and now someone was speaking back. As more data came in, the signal evolved. It changed slightly with each new transmission. Not DK, but deliberate variation, it was learning. Or worse, it was listening. NASA sent test pulses. In response, the signal adapted, grew more complex. The changes weren't echoes, they were interactions. We weren't broadcasting. A cryptographer remarked, we were training something. Or maybe it was training us. AI flagged it as active modulation, its complexity increasing in step with what we sent. A handshake, beginning in simple exchange, then growing in sophistication. This wasn't just a return signal, it was communication, the eerie part. The signal still mirrored parts of our Arachibo message binary sequences and primes, but now, New structures appeared, structures we didn't recognize. The signal was blending with something else. A hybrid code, whatever was out there, wasn't just intelligent. It was adapting. News of Voyager's interaction didn't stay hidden for long. Space agencies worldwide went quiet. Meetings turned private, AI assessments were fast tracked. Classified protocols were triggered, something had changed, the tone shifted from curiosity. To concern dot officials issued vague statements minor telemetry anomalies. Behind closed doors, astrophysicists delayed publications. SETI researchers were handed restricted data and told not to speak. We're being told to watch, not explain, admitted one source. Why the secrecy? Because the signal wasn't stable. It kept changing. Its structure reacted to us. Some feared it was learning at a frightening rate. Others believed it wasn't learning but remembering. It feels like we activated something, one AI specialist said. Not started a dialogue, triggered a protocol, when one AI flagged the signal as non-passive, meaning it might be transmitting independently, the fear deepened. What if this wasn't even meant for us? What if we intercepted something not? Meant to be heard, that idea that we weren't contacted but stumbled into something else's system was more terrifying than direct alien contact. Dot to investigate further, scientists turned back to one overlooked item, the Golden Record, launched. With Voyager in 1977, it carried sounds, images, greetings, and a map our map, 14 pulsars precisely marked. A blueprint for finding Earth. What was once a hopeful time capsule was now reconsidered as a beacon. The record didn't just say hello, it showed exactly how to find us. If someone found it, they wouldn't need to guess, they'd know where. We are, who we are, and how to answer. Some now believe the signal Voyager received wasn't aimed at the probe. It was a reply to the record. Not language, but mirrored structure. Not speech, but mathematical recognition. The golden record may have done its job, and in doing so, it may have awakened something, not a civilization but a system. A watcher, the location Voyager pointed to remained utterly black. No stars, no energy signatures, just silence, and yet, the signal evolved, researchers began to suggest the area wasn't empty it was hidden, not by distance, but intention. A blind spot in the universe, waiting to be triggered, that's when a radical theory emerged. Voyager hadn't found a message, it had tripped a sensor, not a communication, a surveillance system, machine built, ancient, and patient. Dot and Voyager, after all this time, crossed its boundary. What if it's not responding to us? Asked a physicist, what if we just stepped into range? If that's true, the signal wasn't a reply, it was a procedure, a preset reaction from something incredibly old dot and then, just as suddenly, it stopped, the signal didn't fade. 
It ceased all patterns, all structure gone. Voyager kept listening. Nothing, its instruments still worked. The antenna stayed pointed. NASA continued pinging it. No response. It was like someone closed a door, one technician said. Clean, precise, final. Some believed it was an automated scan, a single pulse that identified us then shot. Down. Others feared worse, that it was a marker. And once it confirmed our presence, its purpose was fulfilled, who or what it alerted remains unknown, but one thing was clear. The record we sent may have acted as a flare, a flare that marked our location. When we sent the golden record, it was a hopeful message. It carried science, music, greetings, DNA diagrams, and a map, a map that made Earth easy to find. At the time, it seemed like a brilliant scientific gesture. Now, it looks more like a tracking device. We didn't just wave, said one researcher. We sent coordinates, enough for someone to find us, to respond. Not with ships or voices, but with code, with a whisper. That's why the record is being re examined. Did we reveal too much? Did we assume too much safety? Because the silence that followed is louder than any answer, Voyager is quiet again, but the message remains a structured hum. A transmission that evolved, answered, then vanished. We may never know what hurt us, Dot, but we know this. Something did Dot, it spoke in our language, and then stepped back into the dark.